And this episode is sponsored by Juicy Crab, also known as my absolute favorite seafood seasoning right now. You can grab yours via the link in my description box. Please give it a try. It is absolutely phenomenal on seafood boils. I've used it on my king crab leg episode as well as my lobster roll episode. This stuff is good on everything, guys. I even use it in my seafood stuffing, and man, I just can't say enough about it. So grab yours today via the link in my description box. You can hit their website. It's super easy to check out as you can see right here and it's up to 36 percent off right now so don't waste any time go ahead and visit the website order your juicy crab seasoning and make delicious seafood at home make yourself a seafood boil after the holidays and just know when people think seafood they think juicy crab What's up guys, welcome back. 2021 is coming to a close and I know you guys need a good recipe to finish the year strong. So today I'm gonna show you how to make this short rib ragu. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit that bell to enable notifications as well. All right guys, meet me in the kitchen. Let's make it happen. We're getting this party started with our prep work. We're gonna prep our carrots, onion, and garlic for this recipe. Now I know some of you guys probably don't like carrots, but trust me on this one, you need to add it to this sauce because it adds a little hint of sweetness and kind of cuts through the acidity from all the tomato products that we're going to be using and my grandmother always told me as a kid that carrots are good for your eyes so there's that the prep work for this recipe is super easy all you got to do is chop the ends off of your carrots break out the potato peeler and peel them up get rid of the skin make sure they're nice and clean and then we're going to dice them nice and fine doesn't really matter how you chop them up because we're going to blend them up later this is how i like to prep mine though kind of the same way i prep my celery we're just gonna cut them into little match sticks and then we're gonna spin them around and dice them up Again, guys, doesn't really matter how small you dice them because we are going to use an immersion blender later for our sauce, so don't really stress over that. And once you're done with those carrots, we're going to move on to our onion. You need one large yellow onion for this recipe that we're also going to dice up nice and fine. As always, guys, specific measurements and ingredients are provided for you in the description box below, so don't forget to check that out. So there we go. We got our carrots and our onions taken care of. Now it's time to move on to the garlic. You're going to need three to four cloves of garlic that we're going to smash, peel, and dice. You could also use minced garlic from the jar if you want to, but fresh garlic is always best. Doesn't really matter though, it's not going to make a huge difference, so use what you have on hand. We want to dice this up nice and fine, or we can use a garlic press. And our veggies are prepped, and now it's time to move on to the beautiful short ribs that we have here on the cutting board. You need about two to three pounds of short ribs for this recipe. When you're shopping for short ribs, you want to try to make sure they're nice and even in size and thickness. You want to look for good marbling, which are those white lines of fat that you see throughout the meat as well. Short ribs are by far one of my favorite things to eat and cook. They're super versatile. You can do so many things with the leftovers, and this pasta is one of my favorites as well. I know you guys are going to love this recipe. All right, so first things first, you want to let these short ribs come up to room temperature before we start cooking them. We're going to apply a nice layer of kosher salt to all sides of the short ribs. We're only going to season them with salt for now. We're going to add tons of seasoning and flavor later but I'll explain why you only want to use salt up front because we're looking for a beautiful sear and crust on these short ribs. So trust me on this one, guys. I'll explain here in just a second. Now let's take a look at the liquids we're going to use. We're going to use some good beef broth here, about a cup of that. We're going to pour that into our measuring glass and set that aside. I like to get all my prep work done and out of the way. That way we're not having to stop in the middle of cooking to find our ingredients. We're also going to use one can of crushed tomatoes and we're also going to need two cups of dry red wine nothing too expensive guys just something that you would drink at home speaking of that we're going to pour ourselves a glass because why the hell not i always tell you guys how important it is to taste as you go so i gotta lead by example here all jokes aside though guys we need two cups of dry red wine something like a cabernet and of course if you don't drink wine or don't want to cook with it you can just use more beef stock and now my friends we're going to heat our dutch oven over medium high add a couple tablespoons of avocado oil and then we're going to place our short ribs into that to get a nice sear. We only added salt to the short ribs so far. Don't worry, there's plenty more flavor to come. The reason why this is important is because during the searing process, if you have a lot of other spices on your short ribs, they're going to burn up and cause your oil to burn more quickly. And we're trying to do this in batches and we want nice and clean oil, which you'll see here in just a second. Oh man, that sear is perfect. Look at that. Also got a little shameless plug of the cookbook. If you haven't gotten that yet, you can get yours via the link in my description box. But look at this guys. This is what we were talking about. Our oil is still nice and clean. Some of the fat has rendered from those short ribs 
ribs and that's going to add tons of flavor to the rest of this dish you can skim off some of the fat if you want to but it's important to leave behind at least a couple tablespoons to cook your veggies in and now my friends it's time to add some flavor to the party we're going in with my all-purpose seasoning which is a blend of salt pepper garlic and onion powder and a little bit of my hot ap seasoning which has some jalapeno and cayenne for a little kick as always the heat is totally optional guys if you don't like spice you can leave that out we're going to sweat down those veggies until they start to get nice and tender and then we're going in with one teaspoon of better than bouillon beef base that's really going to beef up the beef flavor then we're going in with one tablespoon of dijon mustard followed by one tablespoon of tomato paste you want to give that a mix all those flavors are going to come together and marry or date i don't want to push marriage on anybody as you can see it's formed a nice paste like consistency that's going to thicken things up and now we're going to add in that garlic from earlier. You don't want to add your garlic too soon because the garlic has a tendency to burn. So we're going to add it towards the end like you see right there. And now, my friends, it's time to deglaze the pot with that red wine. Again, if you don't like red wine, just use beef stock in place of that. We're going to bring that up to a boil and then reduce it down to a simmer. It's important to scrape the bottom and to make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom of your Dutch oven or to the sides. Once we reach a boil like this, we're going to start to reduce the heat here in just a second. Your house is going to be smelling absolutely amazing. And now it's time to go in with those crushed tomatoes. About a half a can right now. You can add a other half later if you want to. Another quick reminder, guys, that all the specific measurements and ingredients are provided for you in the description box below. And now it's time to season to taste. We're going in with a little bit more salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. A little Italian seasoning as well. We're going to throw in some thyme leaves to add some aromatics and some fresh herb flavor. One bay leaf as well. You want to give that a mix to combine and make sure everything is seasoned to taste at this point because this is what your short ribs are going to braise in. It's going to be so delicious, guys. Once you got it right where you want it, we're going to add those short ribs back to the party. Allow them to cook slowly. You want to put this on a low setting and allow this to cook for about two and a half to three hours or until the short ribs are fork tender, which means they shred easily with a fork. This is after about two, two and a half hours. We're checking them for tenderness. Not quite there, so we're going to let them cook a little bit longer. And again, just on a nice low setting. Once the bone slips out and the meat is tender, you know that they're done. So we're going to pull the short ribs out of that liquid, place them on a cutting board to cool for a second, and then we're going to shred them up. Oh my goodness, look at that. Say it with me, guys. Looking good. This part is the hardest part of the whole recipe because it's so hard not to eat all of this delicious short rib before you put it back in your sauce. There's nothing like a good short rib ragu. If you guys haven't tried this yet, definitely give this recipe a try. Now that we have our meat shredded and ready to go back into the sauce, it's time to boil our noodles. We're going to use Pepperdell noodles for this, but you can use whatever noodles you want. You do want a nice thick noodle for this because the sauce is pretty thick. As always, cook your pasta per package instructions and make sure you salt your pasta water. Let me know in the comments what other pasta recipes you guys want to see. This is by far one of my favorites. Now it's time to get the immersion blender, get in there and blend our sauce until it's nice and smooth, smoother than a three day weekend or a holiday weekend that we've been enjoying. Hopefully you guys are ready to go back to work. Just kidding. I know you're not. And now we're going to add a couple tablespoons of heavy cream to the sauce, a little final season. And this is the last step to go ahead and taste as you go and adjust the flavor to your preference before we plate this up. We're going to grate in some fresh Parmesan cheese because why the hell not? Parmesan cheese is delicious. It's going to make this sauce even better. Oh man, look at how rich and beautiful that color is on this sauce. Nice and thick, like we said. Now we're gonna go in with our braised short rib that we shredded up beautifully. We saved one whole short rib for presentation purposes to kind of plate on top of the pasta. Oh man, I can't wait for you guys to try this recipe. It's also important to save about a cup of pasta water for this step here. We're gonna go ahead and warm our sauce, add the noodles, give them a toss, add a little splash of pasta water to thin things out a little bit. You want to see that sauce really coat those noodles like you see right here. There's a good chance this could become your new favorite pasta recipe. Let me know what you think in the comments. That might be the money shot right there. All right, my friends, it's time to plate this up. Get us a taste test. You know we got to go down with a little fresh chopped parsley and some grated Parmesan cheese. Got to make the thumbnail look good for you guys to click on it. And you guys know we eat with our eyes first. Brace yourself for a trademark money shot. I'm going in for the taste test. I can't wait any longer. And that, my friends, is for sure a fork drop recipe. You guys got to give this a try for New Year's. Thank you again for all the support this year. Happy holidays, happy new year, all that good stuff. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell to enable notifications. And as always, thank you for your support.